Have you ever wondered whether you can freeze eggs? And if you can freeze them, what's the best way of doing it? Well, if you have and you'd like to find out, stick around. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the chicken enclosure on a glorious sunny day. My name's Hugh, and today I want to do something a little bit different with you. I want to explore a topic and do a bit of discovery and we'll find out the results together. A while ago, we made a video on three different ways that we preserve eggs, and I'll put a link somewhere up there. And one of those methods was freezing eggs. We tend to beat eggs and then freeze the beaten egg in little silicon moulds in the freezer, and that works brilliantly for us when the hens are off leg because they're molting or brooding or what have you. But we got a load of questions about that, which was you know, things like, can you freeze a whole egg in each shell? Can you freeze a whole egg out of the shell? Etc. Honestly, I've not tried all of them, so I thought the best way to find out which of those work is to do them all together. We'll take a look at the results together, and if any of them look promising, we'll cook them up together too. We're going to try five methods today. I'm going to put whole eggs in the shell in the freezer. That's one. Second one I'm going to do, crack an egg, take the shell away, but stay with a whole egg and freeze that in a silicon muffin mould. Third way, we're going to take an egg, crack it, beat it, freeze that in a silicon muffin mould. So three different ways of looking at whole egg. Then we can look at two ways of doing separated eggs. So we'll crack and separate some eggs. Some of them will freeze as whole yolks and whole whites. Some of them will freeze as beaten yolks and beaten whites. So that'll give us five different things to look at. What we can then do, defrost them, take a look, see which ones look good, see what we can learn from that. And if any are looking good, we'll cook some up and we'll see how that works out. Let's go into the kitchen and get started. So our first three tests are going to be for whole egg, unseparated egg. One in the shell, one where we just crack them and put the complete egg into a muffin tray, and one where we beat them first and then put beaten egg, one egg at a time, into the muffin trays. Now if you watched the previous video, you'd have seen that I normally do the beaten egg by just cracking the eggs into a blender or a liquidizer, whizzing them up, and then pouring them out into the muffin trays. It's quick and it's efficient. What I have noticed recently though, is I'm getting rather more froth than I would like on the top of the beaten egg when I freeze them. Honestly, when the time it defrosts, it doesn't make that much of a difference, but I'd like to try and minimize it. So for today, I'm just gonna use a hand whisk when I beat those eggs and we freeze them as beaten egg. Let's give that a try. This is our sophisticated test equipment. These are silicon muffin trays. We use these for lots of things like freezing individual portions of stewed fruit. And you might wonder why we do that. Well, take apple sauce as a good example. I'll make up a big batch, I'll put it out into each of these compartments, freeze it, and then turn out the frozen pieces very easily from the silicon. If we're having roast pork and there's two of us, we bring out two little muffins of apple sauce, and that's enough for the meal. We don't have to make fresh every single time we have roast pork. They're brilliant things. I've got four of them, so we use one for each technique, except for the whole eggs in the shell, and I'll just freeze those in a clip-top box. And I'm gonna freeze half a dozen eggs for each method, and that'll give us a representative sample. So if one goes wrong, we'll be able to tell the difference between if it was just a dodgy egg, or my clumsiness, or whether the technique as a whole doesn't work very well. Here's six eggs for freezing then. We're gonna use two each from three different breed. Crusty Cream Leg Bar, Well Summer, Buff Orpington. I don't believe, honestly, that different breeds will freeze differently, but we might as well test it. We have the capability. So we'll pop the lid on and we'll freeze them entire in the shell. The method I'm gonna use for whole eggs is to crack them individually into a jug. Check to make sure it's a good egg and the yolk's not damaged and then pour them into the mould. Because I've got six empty muffin holes in this tray, I'm gonna put the six full beaten eggs in the other side. Off to the freezer for this batch then. One thing to point out is I've rested 
the muffin tray on a baking tray. Why? Because if you try and lift one of these, which is flexible when it's full of egg, you're gonna spill it. It's something I usually forget till I'm halfway through and I go through a very careful juggling exercise of trying to slide the muffin tray on top of the baking tray. But if you can remember to do it first, please do. It makes your life so much easier. This is our chest freezer. It's a big one. We also have two upright freezers. Right? Chest freezer will suit putting the eggs in their clip top container. In the last two of our five freezing techniques we're gonna try, I'm gonna separate the egg yolks from the egg whites. In one technique, I'm gonna freeze the yolks individually. In the other, I'm gonna freeze the yolks beaten in the muffin trays. So they won't be sat there as an individual yolk, they'll be poured out from a jug. How am I gonna separate them? Well, I'm gonna use this. This is one of Fiona's favorite tools, a little coiled egg separator, really a very clever little tool. Now, if you haven't got one, crank the egg onto a saucer or a side plate, put an egg cup over the yolk, you can pour off the white. I usually do it by juggling backwards and forwards with the egg between the two halves of the cracked egg and eventually the white will fall away leaving the yolk in one half of the egg. You can even just strain it through your fingers. There's plenty of ways of doing it but Fiona loves this tool and I have to say it's very efficient. So let's look at those two techniques. So to separate our eggs, crack them carefully into the jug. We'll take our egg separator And we'll let the white fall through the little wire separator. Then we can carefully drop the egg yolk like that into one of the muffin tray moulds and pour the white in a separate mould next to it. So produce separated eggs and white and then beat them. Again, crack an egg into a receptacle, check the egg is fine, it's not discoloured and we haven't broken the yolk. And then we can pour off the white into a separate container. There it drops. Then we can drop the yolk into another jug or bowl. We can beat those up and freeze them separately. Our eggs are frozen overnight, so let's take a look. And if they look okay, we can turn some out, defrost them, and perhaps even see how they cook. Let's have a look at our whole eggs in the shell. Yeah. The contents of the egg have expanded when they've frozen, and that's caused the shell to crack. It's not a great surprise when you think about it, Ice floats on water because ice expands and therefore is less dense than water. Same thing's happened with the egg and that's cracked the shell. But I do wonder, could we remove that shell now without massively damaging the interior, like a hard boiled egg? Let's take a look. So can we get that shell off? <laughs> Doesn't seem easy. No. Unlike a hard boiled egg, you can't get the shell off the interior. So I think that's fairly conclusive. Let's not freeze whole eggs in the shell. I suppose one thing we could try is to let these defrost and just see what happens when the egg defrosts in the cracked shell. Well, these are the whole frozen eggs. The white looks completely normal. The yolk, not quite normal. It, it looks a little bit firmer close up than I would expect. I'd like to turn that on a plate and we'll cut into that raw yolk and see what we think. Let's take a look. A 
think we can see that the whole egg, that yolk, has gone hard. You wouldn't expect with a raw egg to be able to slice the yolk in half like that. It doesn't look unappetizing, but it is certainly hardened up in the freezing process. And I think if you like an egg with a sunny side up kind of fried egg approach, I don't think that's really going to work. What I'm doing is putting a fresh egg into a frying pan and we'll add one of our defrosted eggs. We'll see if we can tell the difference when they're cooked. The fresh egg is done. Defrosted egg, this bit of white here still looks like it wants a bit longer. Because that white's firmed up, it's sitting in a thicker layer and it's not cooking through so quickly. But we'll take out the fresh egg and we'll take out the defrosted egg as soon as that white looks done. So here we have one sunny side up fresh egg. And if we break into it, we can see that yolk runs, but the white is nice and firm, easy to cut. This is the frozen and defrosted egg. The white, absolutely fine. As I say, this area of the white, the center, did sit up a little deeper. I think you can probably see that, but it looks absolutely great. Let's take a look at the yolk. The yolk is sort of jelly-like and quite firm. I'm not sure that I would necessarily want to eat that as a fried egg. This is our beaten frozen egg that's been defrosted. I think you'll agree, that looks like beaten egg. Why don't we make some scrambled eggs and see how it looks then. There we are, a little bit of butter in the frying pan. In goes our beaten egg. It is a little bit thicker still than I would expect a beaten egg mixture to look like. Here's our scrambled egg. Honestly, visually, I haven't put any black pepper in and I haven't put any chives in, which I normally would, but I cannot distinguish that from scrambled egg I would normally make. I'm going to subject it off camera to spare you to a taste test. Delicious, perfectly normal, indistinguishable scrambled egg. the eggs that we separated but froze the whites and the yolks whole. I'm very interested to see whether these yolks have got the same problem as when we froze an entire whole egg. Yep, somehow that yolk has become very firm, almost jelly-like in its consistency. The whites though haven't. So why don't we try whipping those whites as though we were going to make a meringue or a souffle and see if they've still got the right properties. One thing I have found, don't try and whip egg whites in a shallow dessert bowl because you make a mess. So I've moved them into a deeper pasta bowl for whipping. And it's looking good. You can see it gathering air in that egg white. Bit more hand work though. So I've got it to a soft peak stage. I could whip it further, certainly, get it to a stiff peak stage. But could I get that to a state where I could make a meringue or a souffle? Absolutely I could. Nothing wrong with those separated egg whites whatsoever. These are where we separated the yolks from the whites, beat the yolks and froze them en masse and the same with the whites. I think we can see even in a much deeper, bigger block, we have that same problem with the yolks. The whites though, still runny, absolutely fine.
Now here's something quite interesting. These are the cracked frozen eggs. You probably can't tell, but there's a crack running all the way down there. Probably more obvious on this one, but they haven't leaked. I did smack that one on the end with a spoon. There's a little tiny bit coming out, but not much. Now look at that. That looks like a proper egg. Let's take a look at the yolk. I can't wait to try this. What have we got? Well, blow me down that yolk. It's got a slight thickening to it. I can't lie. I'd love to tell you it was entirely runny, but much, much better than the eggs done where I've taken the shell off. In fact, we've got to fry one, haven't we? Let's take a look then. The white, yeah, that's just a fried egg white. The yolk. Sadly, it is softer. There's no two ways around it. It's softer than where we've frozen the yolk separately. But it's not a nice runny sunny side up egg. So what conclusions can we draw there? Well, I think certainly freezing beaten eggs is extremely viable. I think freezing egg whites, either beaten or not beaten, works particularly well. Freezing separated egg yolks means that those egg yolks are going to get a bit thick. Now, that doesn't mean you can't use them, that doesn't mean they won't taste good. I think if you wanted to use them in something like baking, that would be absolutely fine. I think if you wanted a sunny side up egg fried after freezing it, you're probably going to be out of luck. If you've enjoyed today's video, can you spare us five seconds and give us a thumbs up down below? If you'd like to see more on preserving food, and believe it or not, I can think of at least another half a dozen ways to preserve eggs, but there's lots of other topics out there from fruit to meat to vegetables. If you want to see any of that, let us know in the comments what you'd like to see, and we'll try and make those videos for you. And if you'd like to see those videos and everything we make on self-reliant, self-sufficient living, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on subscribe down there and the bell next to it, you hit every time we upload a new video. But for today, thanks for watching. Come back and see us soon. Take care.